coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm the board game teacher. Thanks for coming to the classroom. Today I'm taking a look at Onitama by Arcane Wonders. And look at the report card for Onitama. I'm going to give the number of players a C+. Now this may seem a little bit funny to give it a C+, when it's a two-player game, because that's all it is, it's just a two-player game. Uh, but in consideration of the cost and the time, which I'm going to talk about more later, it factors in that this is not such a big deal to be a two-player game. It's very cheap, it's a very inexpensive game to buy, and it's a um, very quick game to play. So you can recycle through players quite quickly. For learning, I'm going to give the game a C+. Uh, again, it's one of those games that's not a curricularly based game. You're not going to use this to teach anything about uh, any particular culture. You're not going to teach any sort of mathematics around it. Uh, there's not really a lot of language involved. There is some spatial reasoning in the in the mathematics and the way that things are moved on with the cards, and I'll show you that when I show you how the game is played. Uh, but overall, it's really not a lot there that you would use to in a classroom setting to teach a particular subject. What it would be good for is perhaps indoor recesses or when students have time, they can pull it, quickly pull out Onitama because it's a very quick game to play, so they can do it in a short space of time. For fun, I'm going to give Onitama an A. I love this game. Uh, what it reminds me of, and it's a very clear connection to, is chess. Uh, but unlike chess, where every piece has a prescribed movement, you're going to have prescribed movements, but it's going to be different every game based on the cards that you have. Again, you'll see more when you, when you, if you watch the part where I show how the game is played. But it's, um, it just makes every game very interesting, very fresh and different. And uh, fewer pieces makes the game quicker and more simple. So uh, I just enjoy that aspect of Onitama. I just find it's a really fun game, and it's a great introduction to chess, too, if that's something you'd like to go into afterwards. For time, I'm going to give Onitama an A. Uh, the game plays in about 10, 15 minutes. So you could definitely, if you're playing this uh, during a lunch break or something, students could certainly get a game or two in. Or even, as I said, if there's a time where students have finished the work early and they need a quiet activity to do while they wait for the rest of the class to catch up, then this, again, could be a great incentive for those students to do something quiet and minds-on while they're doing it while developing critical thinking and problem-solving skills. And for the cost, I'm going to give the game an A. Uh, Onitama at levelup.ca runs for about $26 which for a game like this is great. The components inside are a, like a high quality plastic. You even have this nice, um, here, I'll show you, you have this nice neoprene mat which comes with the game. Neoprene is like, um, it's a type of rubber, uh, but it's got this nice sort of smooth, silky surface on the one side with the, with the, the board. So that's your board. You don't actually have a, a cardboard board, which I think is nice because this is much more durable, resistant to damage from students. You're not gonna be able to tear this thing without like scissors or something and then the, these nice plastic pieces. You have these cards, and I mean, you could sleeve these if you're worried about the cards getting damaged, but um, that they, that's the only sort of, that's the most destructible component in the thing, but the most important ones are the ones that are far higher quality. So for everything you're getting in there, I think the $26 is a great deal for such a game, particularly one that you're going to probably get a lot of use out of. Let's take it to the table, and I'll show you how it's played. So here's a game of Onitama all set up and ready to go. Uh, with the squares and the pieces, you can see how this game is you know, really reminiscent of chess. Uh, but unlike chess, where everything has a prescribed movement, in Onitama, you are a couple of dueling sort of kung fu factions, uh, different dojos here, trying to prove that their style is best. Each team, uh, the blue and the red, is going to start off with uh, two styles of kung fu here. So blue now has horse and monkey style, whereas red has crab and goose. In the middle, you also put another one. So this comes from a deck of cards where there's a large deck of cards. So in every game, you're only going to be playing with five styles. So it's going to make every game feel a little bit different. So when you're playing the game, what's going to happen is you're going to use these cards to move in the prescribed direction. So if I'm moving, the, the, say, this pawn here, horse style, it shows the black square shows where the pawn is starting. So this pawn could either go to the left here, but he can't because the sensei's in the way. Back can't go there because the that's off the map, so forward would be the only direction. Whereas if he had chosen to do monkey style, 
Mm -hmm. Monkey style gives you two diagonally backwards directions that uh, cannot be used. So it would be either here or here. So maybe he's going to come in here in front of the sensei. Now once he's used this card, what he does, he switches this card with the card that's at the top here and then puts the eel card down here. The play that goes to the red player, the red player then has a choice to do goose, which can, um, so this one could come up here. So it's really going to be a diagonal movement because there's nothing else that's able to be done with the goose right now. So maybe they could look at crab as well. So crab, they can go one forward. Now say this one was here. All right, actually, let's just set this one up so you can see the movements of crab. So we'll, we'll set up with goose and we'll move the sensei up here with goose. Okay, so then the sensei then replaces with the middle card, puts goose there and takes monkey. Play then goes back to this team. So they are looking to do something. So maybe now they'll do horse. So horse, he'll go forward one and switch with goose. And now with crab, I want to show you how crab works. So with crab, the sensei can skip a space. So skip this one, go here or move forward one. Now always have to be considerate of where are the possible areas they can go. Right now, this sensei is actually perfectly safe from the student right here because there's nothing the student can do that will put them diagonally to the right. Every other, so diagonally to the left or on the sides is dangerous. If the sensei were to come here and the student played goose, they capture the sensei and they've won. That's one of the two ways that you win. The other way that can be won is if the sensei makes it all the way to the other side's dojo. So if the red sensei makes it to the blue dojo, or the blue sensei makes it to the red dojo, whoever makes it to that spot is also declared the winner. So play continues until one of those win conditions is met. Any time that a player, so say the red sensei now were to use monkey, he takes it and removes the piece from the board. And play, once if the sensei piece is removed, then the other team wins. Otherwise, the pawns are there just to, the, the students are used just like pawns and chess to capture and to uh, just sort of get in the way. And that is how you play Onitama. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. If you have any questions about Onitama or if you have any ideas for other games you'd like to see on the channel, please leave me a message in the comment section below. I'm probably going to be doing a playthrough of Onitama with Timothy in the very near future, so keep an eye out for that one. And please, before you go, please do hit like and subscribe. That will help me out very much. But until next time, I'm Craig Thompson with the Board Game Teacher saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school?